Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Cinnamon Stitches. I am your yarn host, Jennifer. Wow, it is day four of premiere week already. The week has just flown by. Lots of fun projects to make. Today, we're featuring another new yarn that I have never tried before. This yarn was first thrown on the floor just now. <laughs> It's just how we work on cinnamon stitches. We throw our yarn on the floor first. Okay, so I first discovered this yarn, touched this yarn, felt this yarn when it first was released by Premiere. Okay, apparently it picked up some stuff off the floor. So I'm trying to dust it off because it's white and white shows dirt. So the first time I saw this yarn was right after it was released. I had just gotten the horrible news that my local AC Moore store was closing and that all AC Moore stores were closing. However, AC Moore was my number one go-to store to buy Premier Yarns, to try Premier Yarns. They always carried the new yarns that were released by Premier and they were the first ones that I could go to AC Moore and touch the yarn and feel the yarn and see if I liked it or not. And AC Moore had just announced it was closing and I went to the store and sure enough, the brand new Pixie Dust yarn was on the shelf at AC Moore. There wasn't much around it because the sh store shelves were already cleared out from all the people going to get the clearance yarn. And at the time, I was not completely won over by this yarn. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. I've always been honest with you guys. Nothing will ever change with that. This is another yarn that was suggested to me to try. The yarn is beautiful, no doubt. It is sparkly, and we love sparkly yarn. However, it's also very similar to another type of blanket yarn that I'm not a fan of. <laughs> And you guys know my policy over here. I don't tend to show you yarns that I'm not a fan of. However, I have not ever worked with this yarn. It is very soft, it is very squishy, and it is way more sparkly than what is showing up on the screen. And I have it in two colors. The white definitely shows the sparkle more than the purple on the camera. But in person, they're both equally sparkly. This yarn retails for, where did I put my notebook? I think it's $7.99. Hang on, I'll grab my notebook and I'll tell you for certain. Yes, it is $7.99 for 427 yards. So that's not a bad price. That's pretty good for a blanket yarn style yarn. This is 92.5% polyester. Why 0.5? I have no idea. And 7.5% metallic. And the metallic very, very much resembles like Stellina and some other yarns that I have. But it just says metallic. It is very, very fuzzy and sparkly. This says that it is a worsted weight number four. I don't think I would classify it as a four. I mean, maybe. Um, I This looks really thin for a number four to me. Although maybe I'm just used to working with other blanket yarns that are bulky or super bulky. And maybe that's why this feels so thin to me. It feels really thin to me. And if you compare it to last week or the beginning of the week when I had the Aspen, and this might be why it seems so thin to me because this is a furry yarn. That's a bulky five. And in comparison, look how thin that is next to the bulky five. It is. It's drastically thinner. I think if I were to be the one to label this yarn as anything, I would probably label it as uh, number three. But also, you also have to take into consideration with fuzzy yarns, with um, 
furry yarns with this type of yarn a lot of times they will suggest like a bigger hook so that you you're not compressing the fur on the stitches so that may be why it's classified as a number four i'm not a professional yarn categorizer so <laughs> yeah so this is uh here's all the information you need to know 427 yards 391 meters six ounces 170 grams we're still waiting number four hand wash lay flat to dry made as always in turkey as all premier yarns is this is the color periwinkle this is the color white so today we are going to work up a project with this yarn i am still debating what i want to make out of this because i very much see little kid wear so like a furry little hat for a little girl um i can see mittens with like a furry cuff i can see a little uh what are those called a muff <laughs> it's for them to put their little hands in how cute would that be for like see the photographer in me is coming back out because as you know i'm a retired portrait photographer i could see a little girl with a furry hat a fur like a full fur hat and a little fur muff taking her pictures in the snow that would be so cute especially in this color i could see my little niece baby girl i could totally see she loves pinks and purples so i'm sitting here debating which of those things i want to make for this tutorial tutorial definitely leaning towards a hat and a muff set <laughs> so if you have a daughter who is very young you could, you could make this any size let's be real you can make this for yourself and i will include instructions to make this of any size we're just gonna we're gonna do it that way any size <laughs> okay so i think we're gonna do a hat and a muff set i am going to do the tutorial in little girl sizes but i will absolutely give you directions on how to make it for yourself if you want to be a furry goddess in the winter time all right guys meet me at the table and i will start the tutorial now to get started we have our purple yarn and i am using a k hook we make a slip knot you take your yarn and you fold it like it's a little awareness ribbon with the short tail on the back you stick your hook down from the top to the bottom you pull up a loop and you have a slip knot slip knot now we are going to make a hat and to make this hat easier to measure to anyone's head we are going to do it brim up so that means we're going to start with a chain of an unknown number the reason we're doing a chain of an unknown number is because we are going to measure it to different size heads now i know from experience since i'm making this for baby girl she has an 18 inch head and she's only two <laughs> i'm getting out my tape measure now so that i have it handy tape measure um we are known in my family to have large heads and she has a teeny tiny body but she has a bigger than average noggin so i know that if i take this and i start chaining i want to stop at 18 inches and if you're crocheting you know that sometimes crochet is not as stretchy or flexible as knitting you can put in an extra quarter of an inch or half an inch just to ensure that it is going to fit the person you are making it for but most people have an average size head which is where average comes from and you can google anywhere on the internet average size head for a adult male adult female for a 11 year old you can pretty much get the estimate of sizes on the internet to work with for hats but i already know baby girl has an 18 inch head i think i'm going to give it a little bit more room though i think i'm going to make it 19 inches for her because she's growing and i just want to make sure it fits her and she could always wear it next year i mean she's got a lot of growing to do i'm going to measure it we're at 16 
right now. So I'm going to put a couple more. Try that. There's a weird noise outside. And cue the dogs barking. That's 18. Two and three should be 19. I apologize for the dogs, but that's just under 19. So I'm going to put two more stitches and we're going to call it a day. I, at this point, I'm not even going to apologize for the scream. <laughs> we're just, this is my life, guys. There is never quiet in this house ever. There's either wind chimes or dogs or kids or something. However, clearly little man has more control over the dog. Stop barking than I do because one scream and they shut up. All right, now. This yarn is impossible not to twist or for me to see if it's twisting. So instead of connecting it in the round here, I'm going to do the first row first and then I'm going to turn and connect it in the round just so that I can see. One. We're going to start off with just single crochets across. I find with this yarn, the simpler the stitch, the better. And if you have a hard time seeing these stitches, which I clearly am, you can feel free to go up a hook size. I'm just going to feel my way across at this point. And like I said, this is not my favorite yarn to work with. The fuzzy blanket style polyester yarn. As a matter of fact, my sister even called me out on it. She's all, why did you get yarn that you don't like? <laughs> I was like, well, because I'm trying to a showcase a variety of yarns this time. Because there are a lot of you that love, love blanket yarn. And you might not be aware that there's a sparkle blanket yarn on the market. So I'm going to suffer through for you guys. And I obviously, if you don't like, hang on one second. Story time, folks. <laughs> Story time. All right, we're going to break from talking about this yarn for a second. We'll get back to that. I'll let you know what's going on outside and why the dogs are barking and raising hell. Now, you know that I have an American Staffordshire Terrier. Her name is Scarlet, and Scarlet is nicknamed a pit bull. Her breed is nicknamed pit bull. It is very much a derogatory term for her breed. However, we accept the word pity, and we know that pities in the past were used for nanny dogs. They were very good guardian dogs. They were very good um, for watching the children on the farms, and that is what her breed was used for. Now, if you don't know this information, this information is widely available on Google. Feel free to Google Pitbull and Nanny Dogs. Okay. <laughs> we had an old, our first pity. His name was Day Day. And his name was spelled D-A-E-D-A-Y, in case you're curious. He was the love of my daughter's life. He passed away right after my dad did. And, uh... He was 15 years old, and he was with my daughter every inch of her life. So, with that being said, I first really saw the protective over kid thing with the pities with him because there was a time we had these neighbors back in Michigan, and they were, uh, we'll say negligent parents. And they had a baby who was like one and a half years old, and Day Day was in the backyard and he was raising hell, just barking and barking. And I went out to see what he was barking at because he was not, I mean, he would bark. He barked a lot. He was a very vocal dog. Like he, I think he had husky in him because, and he didn't have husky in him. I knew both his parents, but <laughs> he had something in him that was akin to a husky because he was, he just would talk at you. He would, and I knew his voices and I knew his vocalizations and I knew what they meant and I knew something was wrong with the way he was barking. I go outside and the, the next door neighbor's one and a half little baby girl was in the center of the street just by herself. 
I think she may have had just a diaper on. And Dede was out there just like, oh man, he must have alerted them to it too because I went to go step, by the time I got from the back door where I could see that she was out in the yard to the front step to go grab her, their parents were coming out to go get her. And that is what is happening right now with my dogs is they are not happy because the little kids across the street, once again, this is different neighbors, different state, are not always properly cared for. We'll just say that. I told you I don't like the neighbors across the street. So they were in the street right now and the dogs were not happy about that. And Scarlett was alerting to us that the baby was in the street. <laughs> so... And not only were they in the street, they were in the street at the foot of their next door neighbor's driveway. And that lady was backing down the driveway. So, that's why they were raising hell right now. Alright, so that wasn't so bad to work up. But see, now that I have a flat piece of material, I can join it in the round. And I know that I'm not twisting anything because I can actually see it now. And the way that I do this, and I've showed this in other videos... And I know if you are very proficient in working in the round, feel free to do this however you want. But this is the way I do it. I make sure it is lined up. And I connect it on this row. And then I'll come back later and take my tail and weave it here and knot it and then weave it back and forth. And it will secure that. But that's the way I work in the round just because I, I twist the heck out of this when I'm working in the round and no matter what techniques I use it just always work does that all right we are going to do I think we're gonna chain we're gonna chain two there and then we are going to do half double crochets across because honestly I like half double crochets and I think half double crochets will be beautiful in this hat I'm just gonna work it in the round you got to feel for those stitches this is one of the reasons I don't like working with this type of yarn is because it's hard to see. But this is, uh, listen guys, just because we're doing premiere week doesn't mean I can't give you an honest review and opinion. This is not my favorite style of yarn, but I really like the sparkles. And sometimes you have to bear with yarns that you don't like to make specific types of projects because there's not another, in my opinion, or in my knowledge, I should say, there's not another sparkle fuzzy yarn out there like this. Now, if there is, feel free to leave that in the comments and let me know, but I think this is going to be adorable for baby girl. And I already have a box that's waiting to be mailed to her that I have been putting off. I had other packages that cost me an arm and a leg to mail out. <laughs> so, we got a package for her and a package for her mommy. And if you want to make a matching muff to this, it is going to be the same idea. You are just going to work in circles, work in the round. The size of a muff. Now this stitch count, I didn't I didn't take a stitch count because you're measuring it to your own head. Um, would probably work for a muff for an adult. Actually might be kind of big for an adult. So if you're going to make a muff, you're gonna do the same thing that I'm showing you with this hat. You're gonna work it in the round. And you're going to measure that first row by the widest part of your hand. You're going to measure around the widest part of your hand and probably go up an inch so you have room inside the muff. Or, you know, if you're making it for a little girl, figure out what the, uh, the size of her hands are and measure it around that. It's going to be significantly smaller than this for a baby girl because she's, like I said, her body is teeny tiny, but she's got a big head. She doesn't look like, she doesn't look like a bobblehead. <laughs> she doesn't at all. And I know that the way I'm describing her, it sounds like she's a bobblehead, but she's, she's not. I need to move my yarn so I can pull it out easier. 
All right, now that we got past that first row and I can actually kind of feel the stitches and see the stitches, this isn't so bad. Personally, this will not ever be the type of yarn that is in my stash because it's not something I use a lot. But I'm kind of excited to make this. The sparkles are really pretty. And now the kids are in my front yard. You hear them screaming. Those are not my children this time. When they're outside, it's like everybody in that family has like one level of yell. So there's like no talking. So you either hear the kids all screaming at each other, and that's how they talk. Or you hear the adults screaming at each other, because that's how they communicate. Or you hear the adults screaming at the children. I'm going to go ahead and connect this in right now. This is that first row that wasn't connected. Good gravy, them kids are loud. Slip knot. And connected. Bam, see? And then that it just looks like it normally would. No big deal. See, I always like the feel of this yarn. That's not a problem. It's like I like, I love when you have a furry yarn and you work it up. Like I would love this to be a blanket for myself though. Not for, a, this would never be a baby blanket. This would be a blanket for myself or like an older kid. Cause God, I could just see a baby sucking the fur off of this. <laughs> I could just, that, that would not be good. But like much a little bit older kid, I could definitely see this as a blanket. This would be so pretty. If you like working with this kind of yarn, that is. I hope you guys can see the sparkle that is coming through. That was the thing that when this first was released that really drew me to this yarn was the sparkle. Because I would never even seen a blanket yarn that had sparkle. I don't know why they call this a blanket yarn. I mean, it could be used for anything. Definitely wearables. My sister loves this kind of yarn, which is funny because she buys all the fuzzy, soft, squishy yarns, and I don't. So we, like, kind of balance each other out with that. And she'll make something. I'll, I'll say, oh, that is so beautiful. What yarn is that? And she'll tell me, and I'll be like, oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, all right. She actually came in for Chris giving, which is our Thanksgiving Christmas celebration. She came in and I sent her home with a bunch of yarn and I had an unseemly amount of parfait, which is um, a velvet style yarn and she loves it. And it's again, it's not my favorite. It feels like like the parfait is super soft and it makes up a beautiful, beautiful, like it's such a beautiful project. But like the yarn feels uh, almost too soft and flimsy for me. And I just like working with like something that has some, some substance or structure to it. Just personal preference, you know. And so I sent her home with a ton of parfait. I think I gave her like 12 skeins. She was so happy because that's the first thing she reaches for. I think the first thing she ever made was probably made out of parfait. I could be wrong, but we're just continuing on with the double crochets in the round. This hat shouldn't take very long. And of course, as I said, this is the first time I'm working with this yarn. And I tend to just, this is how I crochet. I kind of go with the flow. 
I don't think things through too much. Like I wasn't even sure what I was going to make with this yarn when I started the video. And I was like, well, let's try a hat and a muff set and we'll go from there. And so this pattern I'm working at in my head as we go. So you're getting a glimpse inside of my head to see how I work. I didn't plan none of this and it's going to be beautiful, I promise. But I always like to keep a very simple stitch when you're working with this furry style yarn. Because you're not going to see the details very well. And you don't want to do something that involves... Because here I can feel the holes. I can't necessarily see them. But I can feel where the next stitch needs to go. But you can't do that if it's like a fancy stitch. It's a lot more difficult. And I think that's the reason a lot of people do like this yarn is because you just keep it simple. There's an old, uh, there's an old, uh, what the heck do you call that? It's like an abbreviation, like a little quote. It's KISS, K-I-S-S, -S, keep it simple, stupid. But I don't like that because that's like, demeaning so for kiss we're going to change it up to keep it super simple <laughs> so just just kiss this keep it super simple all right i'm going to join for the next round chain two again this is what we have so far. The first row was single crochets, and then we got two rows. I hope that wasn't out of focus this whole time. <laughs> oh. Whoo, man, I looked at my camera and it looked out of focus. Luckily, that video I just replayed it, it looked like it was in focus. So hopefully, we don't have to re record any of this. <laughs> We're just going to continue going in the round. Oops. We're going to continue this because this is a little girl's pattern until this fabric reaches around four inches. And then we are going to start a decrease for the top of the head. Now, if you're going to do this for an adult head, I would um, make the fabric until it's about six inches and then start to do the decrease. The good thing about this hat pattern is if it's too long, you will be able to fold up the brim. But if it's too short, well, you can always add on to the bottom, but I would suggest you make it longer rather than shorter. So for a little kid, probably four inches of the straight crocheting in the round. For an adult, I would do six inches. If you want it to be like a slouchy style hat, which I don't that would be kind of weird with the style fur, but you could do seven, eight inches before you start the decrease. And this is just how I make all of my hats. I just crochet in the round till I get to that four or six inches, depending child or adult. And then I, I do a decrease and I'll, I'll walk you through the decrease, but I want you to continue doing these half doubles in the round until if you're making a child's hat, it's about four inches. Or if you're making an adult hat until this fabric this way is about six inches from top to bottom. And I will meet you when I reach four inches. All right. So we've been crocheting for a couple minutes here. And we are right at four inches. So we are going to start the decrease because this is going to be for little kids. If you are making an adult hat, add another two inches on before you do the decrease row. Just so that you make sure that it is long enough for your head. Because... Adult heads are not only wider around, but they are longer. So they're just bigger all the way around. 
So um, make sure that you, your hat is long enough for this. And at this point, you can measure it on your head and see where it fits or measure it on a little girl's head and see how it fits. Or a little boy's head, whatever. Like, you could buy this in any color and put sparkly on a little boy if you want sparkly. I don't care. So, but because I'm making this for baby girl, what we are going to do for the decrease rows is we are going to, once again, put double or half double crochets. So, we are going to do in the next six stitches, one, two, three, four, five, six stitches. We're going to put half double crochets. And then over the next two stitches, we're going to do two half doubles together. So you're going to yarn over like you're making a half double. You're going to pull up a loop in the next stitch, and then you're going to go to the stitch right after that and pull up another loop. And that's two half doubles together, and you're going to pull through all of those, okay? And then we're going to go back, and we're going to do six half doubles again. One, two, three, four, five. Six half doubles, and then we're going to do two half doubles together again. So we're going to yarn over, we're going to wrap our yarn like we're making a half double, we're going to pull up a loop, and then we're going to go to the next stitch over and pull up another loop. Pull through all of them, and then six more half double crochets over the next stitch. Six stitches, two, three. Four, five, six, and then two half doubles together. Close my door real quick. We have ambient noise in the house. So, <laughs> I forgot I opened the door to go get a drink of water. All right. Then we are going to find that next stitch and we're gonna do one we're gonna do same thing we've been doing we're gonna do six half double crochets across the next six stitches i think that's four five six and then two together and then six half doubles two Three, four, five, six, and then two together. One, two, six half doubles, two, three, four, five, six. I will say this at the beginning of this video, because this is new yarn. I've not yet worked with it. I said that this leans towards a thin, like maybe a number three. I was completely incorrect in that assumption or that evaluation. This very much works like a number four when you're working with it. I think it just looked thin to me because I had just gotten done working with the Aspen and yeah, it's very thin compared to the Aspen. So that was six and then we're going to do two together. Then of course the stitch count is different by the way you measured it. So I still have an extra stitch here I can work into. So I'm just going to put a half double crochet in there. Because we're not working by stitch counts, we're working by inches. Then we're gonna the next row. We're gonna start off with a half double in the next five stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, and then we're gonna decrease. 
by going into the next two and doing a half double crochet, two half double crochets together, just like we did in the first row. Except this time, instead of six, we're going to do five half doubles. One, two, three, four, five. Sometimes when you review a yarn just by look, by feeling it in the skein, it can be totally different when you work with it. And I'm learning that over time, just by having this channel and by working with yarn and experiencing more yarns. I'm really learning to not always just judge a yarn by its skein. I actually don't mind working with this yarn now that I have it in my hands. <laughs> oh. Isn't that the way it goes? Isn't that the way they say it goes? Well, let's forget all that. Anybody know that song? <laughs> that song is actually before my time. So if you know that song, you listen to music in the 70s. I was born in the 70s, but I was born in 79. And that is definitely one, two, three, four, five. That song is before my time. And I was always exposed to really good music growing up. Although I gotta tell you, that song was exposed to me by a boyfriend I should have never dated when I was 15. Yeah. Still good music though. <laughs> And that, folks, is what it's like living inside Cinnamon Stitch's brain. There's constantly music going off. We're still doing five half doubles. And then two together. And this is giving us the slow decrease that we want. So the hat will come in at the top. And now I have that song stuck in my head. <laughs> oh, man. I'm really curious to see how many of you come up with that song in the comments. Now, we got to the next row. Okay. Next row. We are going to do, you can probably guess, this is a very good pattern. And since my son is learning patterns in first grade class, this is going to be a pattern. The first decrease row will be six half double crochets, two together, all the way around. The next row will be five half double crochets, to, and then two together. And then the next row, which is what we're on, is going to be four half double crochets in the next four stitches, and then two together. Two together and then four half double crochets two three four and then two halves together I always think about it after I start counting out loud as I probably shouldn't count out loud because you guys are probably counting and my counting is probably gonna mess up your counting because there's been so many times I've been watching a tutorial <laughs> and I start counting with the person I could be making something totally different than the tutorial I'm watching and I start the count with their counting so just keep that in mind Another thing I do when I'm watching other tutorials is I try to see if I can crochet as fast as they can or if I can crochet faster than them. But I get frustrated if I crochet faster than them and I'm waiting for them to get to the end of the row and I'm sitting there like, come on, why aren't you at the end of the row yet? <laughs> I'm sure you guys all do that too, right? 
to either like slow down or um hello are you gonna catch up anytime soon catch up mustard This is going to be so cute on little baby girl. Her mom better send me a picture. And of course, this is going to be a couple weeks before I get everything mailed out and she actually gets it. But if I get a picture of baby girl wearing this, I will of course share it with you. If she doesn't first. <laughs> she shares stuff in the group. Sometimes. All right, we're to the end of the row. And you guessed it. The next row. Next row is going to be three half double crochets. And two together. So we're going to do three half doubles. And then two together. What? Brief little uh, moment where I had to pause the video there. It's time for little man to start class. Two, three, and then two together. So if you hear background noise, that will be him preparing his computer to log on and you might hear his teacher talking in the background but that is life these days <laughs> uh homeschool tutorials videos yeah two three half double crochets and then two together One, two, three half double crochets, and two together. One, two. Anybody recognize that song? <laughs> That's the Christmas can can. Two, three. I hope you can hear him singing because if you can't hear him singing, I just sound silly. He's singing pretty loud. He's very much like his mommy, he sings a lot. Lucas. Need you to log into your class, okay? Thank you. I remember. Just do it. All right. This next row, we are going to do two half double crochets. And then two together. Two half double crochets. Two together. Me and Little Man were the musical ones in the family. Randomly singing. My daughter used to be like that, but she's a teenager now, so. You know, she feels weird when she does stuff like that. Everything's an embarrassing moment in the life of a teenager. I don't ever miss the days of being a teenager, can I tell you that? I don't ever want to go back to those days. They were not fun for me. Not fun at all. Best years of my life happened after I turned 20. Two half doubles and then two together. Taking a walk down memory lane today, huh? Wow. All right. 
We got to the end of that row. This is what it looks like so far. You see it's closing up nicely. It's getting that hat look to it. So we only have a couple more rows and it will be completely closed off. So this next row we are going to do one half double and two half doubles together all the way around. One half double two half doubles together, one half double, two together. One half double, two together. Showing his teacher the messy house. <laughs> he said, this is where I used to sit because he's sitting in the dining room now. He usually sits in like either the living room or the craft room here to do his schoolwork. There's laundry all over the couch. Because uh, I'm in the middle of about the eighth bath batch of laundry. Busting my butt. It's a bad thing about being fat is like your clothes are bigger so they take up more room so you have to do more laundry just to catch up to the laundry. <laughs> oh, hashtag fat people problems. All right, we got to the end of that row. This next row, we are just going to do two half doubles together all the way around. So half double, two half doubles together, two half doubles together. Two half doubles together. Two half doubles together. All the way around. I had to stop and check where the beginning of my row was. Couldn't see it. And we'll slip stitch here. And all we have left is this little tiny hole right here. Now, that is a, that's not a huge hole. If you want, you can start like weaving your yarn back and forth and sew that up. But I think I'm going to do one more row, but I'm going to do singles and I'm going to do two singles together all the way across just to give it a little more closure two singles two singles and then we're going to slip stitch that there and find our scissors, clip off a little bit, pull that through, and then we're going to flip the hat inside out, and we're going to grab that piece of yarn and pull it through the inside, like this. Get our yarn needle. And we're going to close that hole up even more. We're just going to take the yarn and go back and forth across the hole. Doesn't really matter. You just want to close it up a little bit. Like that. See? That's what the top of your hat looks like. Nice and closed off. And then, of course, you can weave this in however you choose to weave it in. I don't normally show me weaving in my ends, but we're just going to do it so we can start on the next project, which is going to be the little muff, which shouldn't take any time at all. I think this hat only took me about 40 minutes to complete. 
And that's with like me getting up and doing other stuff in between. So do that. You can put a little knot in here if you want. Just to double lock it. Cut it off. We'll weave in that little bit in a minute. There you have your little sparkly beanie. And we are going to start on the muff in just one second. All right, now we are back to business. <clears throat> I could not get a hold of my sister to get a measurement of baby girl's hands, so I measured little man's hands. His hands are significantly larger than hers, and what I did is I just measured around the fattest part of his hand, like that. Mine is about, we'll say 10 inches. His is about seven inches. So that is the number we're going to go with because her hand will fit very comfortably in a muff of that size, I think. So to do this muff, we are going to start it pretty much the same way we started the hat, which by the way is currently on Holly's head, which is my little mannequin guy, my mannequin girl up there. And it's adorable because Holly has, um, what I would say is a normal adult size head, but since the kids in my life have large heads, which we have, we've already clarified that Holly's head is very similar to the size of both little man's head and baby girl's head. So to get started, we're going to do a slip knot again. This is tutorial number two in this video. Two tutorials in one video. What? And if you already think you know what to do, just go ahead and get started. We're using the same hook and we are going to crochet a chain about seven inches. That's about four. So we need to just about double that. Seven inches exactly. All right. So we got about seven inches and we are once again going to work in the round. I'm going to do this exactly like I did the last row. I'm going to add another chain just so I have a turning chain. I'm going to start with single crochet around. Well, not around. We're not doing around yet. Cross that bottom, which just gave us a thicker fabric. No big deal. And you guys, if you do it differently than I do it, do it the way that it is easiest to you. And understand that I'm doing this the easiest way that it is for me to do these tutorials or these projects we all have different ways of doing these things working in the round we all do it differently and it's all okay you guys need to understand that we all have different ways of doing things we all hold our yarn differently we all hold our hooks differently you know it's okay that's what makes this this yarn community so diverse is the way we all do things we can all learn from each other I know that being a podcaster, I am like subject to lots of extra criticism from people. <laughs> and yeah, that's, that's why I'm explaining to you. Yeah, this is so, it's going to be such a cute little muff with her little tiny hands in there. Yeah, it looks way too small, but keep in mind, she's only, she's only almost three and she wears like, uh, not even a 2T. So she's very petite. All right, so that's the way we do it. We're going to also connect this little, we're going to connect this string down here. Everything's in the way. I feel like I'm all thumbs today. <laughs> that way it's connected all the way across and we can continue our work. There we go. All right, now for the next row, we are going to do half double crochets. 
I like the way the half double crochets worked up in the hat. The fabric is solid, but it's not super dense or super stiff like maybe it would be if it were single crochets. So I think we're just going to stick with the half doubles. And we are going to crochet half double crochets in the round. And I'm going to show you so we're not ending the row. We're going to do to where we just crochet entirely in the round and not um, connect and then chain up. Just keep doing half double crochets in the round. When you get to the front of the row or the beginning of the row, instead of, whoops, instead of chaining over and connecting it like we normally would, we are going to put a half double crochet in the side of the stitch and put one back on top of it. And we're just going to continue crocheting in the round all the way around. Now there's not an end and a beginning to the row. We're just going to spiral this up until it is about seven inches long for the two-year-old. Obviously, if you're making this for a bigger person, if you want to make yourself a muff, by all means, you can make yourself a muff. Just do like I did. Measure the widest part of your hand here and chain that or just a little bit bigger than the size of your hand. So since my hand is 10 inches, I would probably do 10 inches chain and then continue to crochet in the round for probably 10 inches. So 10 by 10. I think that would work for me. See, and you could tell that here was the end of the beginning of the row, but it's just flat, so we're just going to keep crocheting in the round. Half doubles all the way around. Half doubles all the way around. I'm actually excited about this little project, because... I wasn't planning on doing this, but I really think little baby girl is going to love this. She loves just randomly putting stuff on. Because <laughs> her mom is also a crocheter. So her mom will make like hats for other people. And I will be video chatting with them. And baby girl will have like three hats on her head all at the same time. It's really cute. So guys, we are just going to keep con keep continuing, yeah. We're going to crochet, keep crocheting these half doubles all the way around and around and around until you reach your desired length. So whatever your starting chain length is, for this one is 7 inches, we're going to make a tube that is 7 inches. And for mine, let me just double check the, the length of my hand. Length of my hand is about seven inches. So, I don't know, maybe I would make my muff. I'd probably make my muff for an adult size. I'd probably make that like 15 inches, just so it's long enough to cover part of my wrist. I think seven inches is going to be perfect for a little baby girl. So... As I'm sitting here making this to my suggested length of seven inches, of course, that's going to be a, the size of this will be up to you entirely. I was thinking, because this material feels kind of thin, and I might do this, but I might do it off camera. I was thinking about crocheting two of these and putting the white on the inside 
as a liner and sewing them around the edge or even cro single crocheting around the edge with the white to connect them to so that it's double layer and double thick and double warm and so I'm thinking you could do that if you have two colors or you could crochet this double the length and fold it in on itself and close it off to crochet it your crochet to close it off so that's another option for this it's another variation and like I said guys we're just going with the flow with all these patterns we're not like I'm trying to teach you guys not just to crochet but to be creative with your crochet and to not rely so heavily on patterns and tutorials I want you guys to be able to design things for yourself and that is all part of the the main idea behind the cinnamon stitches tutorials is I always want you guys to do things yes I'm showing you guys new techniques that maybe you don't know I'm showing you how to make things but I want you to like go off on your own and I want you to not have to rely on my videos for to I don't want you to have to come back to this video every single time you want to make a muff or a hat I want you to take the ideas that I'm showing you and how to do it. I want you to take that on your own. I want you to improve and I want you to to be able to make things on your own, like design things on your own, because I fully have confidence that you are able to do that. I keep going off camera. I need to pull it up a little bit. <clears throat> That's what I was just thinking as I was sitting here crocheting. I keep having to pause the videos because, you know, I know that you guys can probably hear Little Man's Teacher. <laughs> So I pause it so I can hear what she's saying. I can pause it so I can make sure he's sitting at the table. Mr. Cinnamon is in there currently with him now. So like I know I have a backup in there, but I keep, you know, he has to come in here and get his supplies. So this process is taking a little bit longer than it should. I was sitting here thinking, I was like, this should totally be a double layered muff. I think I'm going to take that white and I'm going to crochet a second muff. And I think I'm going to put it on the inside of this and join it so that it is extra thick and extra warm for her her little baby hands I think if this were the um the aspen that I used at the beginning of the week I would not need to do a double layer I don't think you would need to do a double layer anyway depending on where you live like for where I live in Virginia it's not super bitter cold but in Michigan is much, much colder. So you could totally get away with like, this is very cute. It's standing up to itself. It's stiff enough that it's staying muff shaped. But I think I'm going to do a double layer for her with that white. I think that's just going to be so pretty. And while we're at it, I will put in a picture when I'm done. I will totally put a picture in this video when I'm done. I think I'm also going to add a little bit of white to the brim of that hat as it's sitting here staring at me. <laughs> I just think the white and the purple is going to be so pretty together. And then, of course, the muff will be reversible. So it'll be either white or it'll be purple with that inside layer. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. And then I'm going to have to yell at my sister and tell her to go get that baby a photo shoot in her little hat and muff set. You know, sometimes I really miss, especially photographing the littles. Because you get to a certain, like two-year-olds, no, I don't miss photographing two-year-olds at all whatsoever. But like the four and the five and especially like the six-year-olds, they love just talking to you. And so if you just like would spike a little bit of conversation with them they would do whatever you wanted when you were photographing them and that was like my favorite age to work with or brand new baby newborns that was a lot of fun to photograph too and i, I always think about <laughs> it's kind of funny because when i was a photographer i had a lot of props to use i would actually go and buy little outfits for specific ideas for some of my favorite clients and I would you know dress up these little kids I would watch them grow up it is like amazing thing to go through but um 
I didn't know how to crochet and knit back then. So there's a lot of things I could have did prop wise if I knew how to knit and crochet back when I was a portrait photographer. And now I'm like, dang, this looks like it's getting to be long enough. I'm going to have to measure it. I'm going to have to measure it. It looks like it would fit her little hands in there. Oh, that's only five inches. Nope, we're going to seven. We'll keep going till we get to seven. I'd rather it be too long than not long enough. So yeah. Do seven inches for a little girl. I would do 15 inches for an adult size muff. If you guys have a little girl in your life, or a big girl, or anybody that wants this muffin hat set that would like this with this furry sparkly yarn, if you make this, I want to see what it looks like on other people. <laughs> I love when you guys share your makes with me. I love when you show me what you've done. You could totally do this in single crochets too. I think it would give it a stiffer fabric. Um, I like the way the half doubles look. It almost looks like little like diamonds or something, like or scales, like you know, a furry crocodile or something. That'd be neat, a furry crocodile. <laughs> now don't go out there and try to fur up a crocodile. You get your arm taken off. But it would be neat. I will say this with this yarn is rubbing my finger a little bit rough because I'm feeling the thread in there and not just the fur and it's rubbing my finger a little bit rough so keep that in mind if you're gonna use this yarn it's not unpleasant but I think if I were gonna make something really big out of this I think it would probably rub my, rub my finger raw after a while so that's why we're doing little projects. And the good thing about working in the round like this with this muff is there's no there's no fault line anywhere, so it's just completely the same all the way around. All right, let's see if we're making any progress on the length. Ooh, we only got one more inch to go. We're at six. This is going to be so cute. And then when I am done, and I'm going to show you, we're going to probably do, because we want this to be seven inches, and we want that last row to be single crochets because we started with single crochets. So keep that in mind. Go just shy of your six inches for this to give room for that row of single crochets. I really hope his class isn't too loud. His teacher is like the sweetest thing ever. I really like her. I like her because she's very much a first grade teacher. His um, He's had three teachers so far this year because they keep changing up the way they're doing the schooling, which is driving me insane. But he's handled it really well. Uh, the, the thing is, is like, not all of the teachers are like your typical first grade teachers. They don't know how to interact with the kids the right way. 
and that's very frustrating to me and to him. So let's see, we'll measure it now again. We are at just shy of seven inches. So I am going to go ahead and start where I'm at and just put single, and I'm gonna mark that. Let me find a stitch marker. That's not the right lens. Of my knit tin. I'm going to mark where I'm starting this row so that I know where to end it. That's the first single crochet of the row. I'm going to go around. A single crochet. Then I'm going to end this one and I am going to make a white one and sew the two together and I will come back on and show you what that looks like with the white added in so that you can see that you have an option of making this a single layer or you have the option of making two of these tubes and sewing them together or I'm probably going to run a single crochet around either end to sew or to crochet them together. So you guys can see what that looks like. And I'm definitely going to add white to the brim of that hat, but I'm just going to do like a row of single crochets around the bottom of that. Right here is my last single crochet because that is where our stitch marker is. Take that stitch marker off. We're going to put a slip stitch in that one. We're going to... You know what? I'm going to leave that attached. Because no, I'm not. No, I'm not because we're going to have white around the border. There we go. All right, we're going to tie that off. This is what our little muff looks like currently. Fit cute little two-year-old hands in there. And then I'm going to add a thicker layer so that it's double layered with the white. And I will be back in a few minutes and I will show you what it looks like complete. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. Um, I'm probably, well, I don't know if I'm going to add a video clip onto the end of this or just a photograph of it complete. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you have learned something new about this yarn that we have never tried here on Cinnamon Stitches. I really, I enjoyed working with it, even though I have said I don't, I don't really prefer this type of yarn. I really have enjoyed it. And I think the stitch definition is very cute on this. And I think this is going to be absolutely adorable. I'm sitting here looking at the hat and it is so pretty. And I cannot wait to see it on baby girls. Cute little head. I'm so excited, guys. I will be back in a minute to either show you a video clip or a picture of the completed object. All right, so we are back, guys. I'm in handheld mode. Excuse the mess on the desk, but we're working here. We're creating stuff. We finished the cute little muff right here. And I... Did a little outside. We got the inside is completely white. The outside has a little bit of a trim in the white. It is extra thick now and extra squishy for cute little hands to be inside. And then I added a white brim around the hat. And there you have it. This is our tutorial for the Pixie Dust yarn. I am surprised with how much I enjoyed working with this yarn. Excuse the light coming through the window. It's that time of day. I'm really happy with the way everything turned out. Super cute. Super fun project. I hope that you enjoy this yarn too. I hope that you make something out of this yarn. And I would really love to see. I would really love to see it. If you do make something out of this sparkly, squishy yarn. That surprised the heck out of me. <laughs> I actually think this set would be super cute in pink as well, or maybe baby blue. So there may be more of this in the channel in the future. I don't know, because we still have a whole bunch of this left to work with. So we're going to probably have to figure out what to do with that, or it's going to end up in the scrap bin, and we don't want that, because that's almost a whole skein. Maybe we'll make a cute little scarf. Maybe we'll make a little lap blanket for the car. We'll see. All right, guys, thank you for joining me for day four of Premiere Week, and I will see you tomorrow with our wrap-up and our last yarn.